Welcome to Podcasts, recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcast, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. Good morning to our online community. All right. Let's all stand today and sing this morning and sing our opening song. We've got a new one this month, um, and it's called Peace Begins With Me. Yes? All right. All right. You can get your sway on this morning. Peace begins with to love next and you can interject whatever it is for you let's sing love to the singers, singers, that's right. Welcome friends to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles and practices to transform our lives and make the world a better place. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. 
All we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your life simply by changing your mind. My name is Sean A.B. Larkin. That's right. I serve as a licensed spiritual practitioner here. It is my honor to welcome each and every one of you here today. Is anyone new in the sanctuary? Give us a hand. Yeah, we got a few people. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Please let us know in the chat also if you are new to the center and part of our virtual community and our online practitioner uh, will also welcome you. So welcome uh, to those of you as well joining us from around the world and across time. So if you're new to the center and in person, uh, we have these really cool information packets uh, on the back table. Uh, they look just like this. The same information is also digitally available on our website at cslportland.org under the About Us menu tab. Either with the paper version or the digital version, you'll find a lot of information about who we are, what we stand for, and how we might serve you on your spiritual journey. On our website, you can also sign up for weekly emails that detail our events. You can register for our classes. You can even register your birthday to receive a free gift on that special day. Believe me, it's worth it. Check it out. All right. So if you're not aware, we have started what we call the season for peace and nonviolence. In the sanctuary, we have booklets that look like this. And on our website, it's available in PDF form. I actually have the PDF on my phone, and I do the reading every day on my lunch break. So this is something we started doing, gosh, years ago. And the, the idea is to have daily readings to invite us to consider the spiritual practice of nonviolence and the consciousness of peace. So I'm going to do the reading for today, February 4th. The thought for the day is simplicity. To simplify is to invite peacefulness into your life. Think of three ways you can simplify your life and put at least one of them in practice today. Mm. So again, you can find that on our website and in the back of the sanctuary. All right, this today after service, we have a workshop titled Grand Rising with Reverend Dr. Ruth Miller. And this will be an appreciative inquiry into what we love about CSL Portland, building consciousness as we begin the next stage of our journey in finding that minister that is right for us. So very excited, and right now uh, about this, our in-person roster is full. So we, there, we do have what is called the fire marshal's code. Okay, this is a law of humans, right? We practice spiritual laws here. Uh, part of having a brick and mortar building means we must also honor the laws of the fire marshal. And so we cannot receive more people in person, but it's okay. Zoom can handle as many people as we want. So if you want to engage this workshop, if you're feeling called, uh, to this contemplative practice, uh, head home after service, hop on our website, the Zoom link will be on there and you can join uh, and we're fully set up for full digital participation for this. So I'm very excited for that workshop and thank you for having it. Uh, February 25th, that's a Sunday after service, we're gonna be having a town hall meeting upstairs and on Zoom. So mark your calendars and we'll continue to uh, make that announcement so you can mark your calendar. This upcoming Wednesday's meditation is by licensed practitioner Kathy Batten. If you're not aware, our meditations during the season for peace and nonviolence focus on the particular topic of that Wednesday. And this one is actually, this is going to be really cool. It's Martin Luther King and dreaming. This is going to be a really good meditation, so I hope to see you there. Uh, these are always extra powerful. Uh, we have one class that I'm going to highlight. So as you know, we are a learning center. This is about spiritual learning to inform spiritual living. We have a class that's actually starting this Tuesday, The Mystical Path. This is a seven-week class, formerly known as Practical Mysticism, my favorite of all the classes. This is being facilitated by both Reverend Marilyn Sprague and Practitioner Emerita Kathy Barrett. So I think there you have about 35 years of science of mind teaching experience. Yeah. These are two people that really are experts on, yeah, give them a hand. Uh, and this class is focused on combining the mystical path and the spiritual principle of oneness, in which we have an opportunity to study the perspective of mystic and expanded awareness in our lives. 
So if you feel called to the mystical path, I can't recommend this class enough. It was my favorite out of all the classes I took, and it's the class where I, I never forgot. In the middle of one of the discussions, I kind of looked up at practitioner Meredith, and I was like, am I a mystic? And she was like, yes, Sean. I'm glad you finally figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> so very good, very good. OK. Very honored to have licensed practitioners Annette Bolster and Nadine Moeller holding high watch right now. Our entire community in person and virtually is being held in a sphere of sacred consciousness, knowing the highest and best for all of us. So thank you to both those practitioners for their service. Today, our special music features our very own music director, LaRonda Steele. First Lady of Blues of Portland, Oregon Music Hall of Fame member, and just a shining and brilliant person. today's message, Embracing the Power of Transformation, Reverend Dr. Ruth Miller. As always, so honored to have your sage person here, truly, and has the humility as well. Ah, I learned so much from you. All right. So now, friends, I'm going to invite you to sit back and relax, because I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, and the message is exactly what your heart came to receive. So I'll take a big breath, settle in for our meditation. God is, I am, and we are all a part of this one thing, one power, one presence, one consciousness, one vital energy that moves through all things. It is all one thing. It is this thing that I call God. As we are each a part of it, I know that that unity, that love, that wholeness that is God is the truth of who we are and expresses itself through us as we are receptive to it. Thus I know the process of transformation is taking this unity to a grander and grander part of God. That all change is moving from one key of the scale to the next, from one harmony to a vaster harmony. And as we witness our unfolding, we know that we are all one in God's love. And seeing all of this, I know that it is true and I release this prayer with great gratitude into the action of the law of one, which says yes. And together we say, 
and so it is. Now I invite you to relax in to that sacred stillness always within you and breathe in the good and breathe out the good. Bring it on, everything new, everything different, everything true. I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's going to be everything. I'm through waiting, I'm through hoping against all hope, I'm through longing for something gone that'll never return, think I finally learned, so bring it on. Everything true, I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's gonna be everything new. I'm through grieving, and I'm through dreaming that this life I had is ever coming back. And I'm through wishing on someone else's star that'll never be mine. I think it's time to bring, bring it on. Everything new, everything different, everything true. Oh, I am ready. For my next thing to do, yes. Oh, I know it's gonna be everything new. I've survived many times before. Broken hearts and slamming doors. I'll be all right. Yes, I will once more. Just as I did before, I'm going to rise again. So bring it on, yeah. Everything new, everything different, oh, everything true. Oh, I, I'm ready for my next thing to do, yeah. And oh, I know gonna be everything new bring it on everything new everything different oh everything that's true I am ready for my next thing to do and oh I know it's gonna be everything new It's gonna be everything new. Transformation, yes, yes, yes. Amazing. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you know, she wrote that first song we sang? 
That's amazing, too. Woo-hoo. Ah, of course he did. <laughs> you guys did good. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. I had a wicked thought as I was preparing for today. Um, I was going to ask everyone to change the seats you're sitting in. Let's do it. Can you feel the adrenaline? <laughs> <laughs> Bodies do not like to change. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I thought you could imagine that. That would be good enough. <laughs> ah, yeah. We have this the, you know, whole realm of feelings and experiences around change. And, and then we have this abstraction out here. It's called transformation, right? And when I was first starting to study cybernetics, that's information stuff, um, <laughs> I was given the word transform as part of what we were doing. We were transforming things, and we were transforming the kind of information that was moving from one place to another. And my shorthand for it was X-form. X-form, transform. And I played with that over the years because X-form, you know, crossing it out, right? I'm crossing out the form that was to allow everything new, a new form, right? Hmm. So to cross out the old form, well, that's why we get scared. <laughs> right? Emma Hopkins teaches us that as we begin to live by new principles, all of the structures that were held in place by the old belief system start to come unglued. And the world seems to fall apart. And sometimes our bodies seem to do the same. <laughs> Right? As we are allowing new principles, new beliefs, new understandings, new ways of thinking and being to replace them, there is this stage that my daughter calls butterfly soup. <laughs> it's that stage in the cocoon that I call the yuck. <laughs> right? All it is is a mass of protein jelly when it's in the cocoon, after the caterpillar has let go of the old form, and the DNA is beginning to work into what are our new cell structures, and what are our new cells, are, how they're going to combine, and a new structure comes into place. And if you were to cut open a cocoon at that stage, that's all you'd find is jelly. No caterpillar, no butterfly. Isn't that interesting? Butterfly soup. She actually wrote a little book about how to get through that stage. <laughs> but if, if we're willing to go through that stage, everything is new. And if we're not willing, it feels pretty dreadful. It feels pretty awful. Oh, it's terrible. Everything's falling apart. I can't stand it. <laughs> I've only heard that once or twice. <sighs> and it has to. It must. And I, when I say must, I'm not saying should or ought. I'm saying it can't not happen. It can't not happen. It must happen. Because there is one constant in the universe. Can anyone tell me what it is? Change. Yes. <laughs> Love underlies that whole process. <laughs> and when I remember that, all right? Love is constant throughout all that is, but the universe is matter, and matter is constantly changing form, which is why the Hindus call it maya. 
It means changing, plastic, manipulable, maya. It doesn't mean an illusion, all right? The British guys who were first trying to, to figure out what India was all about had some strange ideas. <laughs> So we're having to undo those things we were taught about Sanskrit and Hinduism. <laughs> so everything in form is constantly changing. And yet, the moment I say, how about just changing your seats? <laughs> the body kicks in with, what? You want me to do what? <laughs> Change? <laughs> Well, how am I going to do it? Where am I going to go? What's the plan? <laughs> right? That's one direction. Or, oh, uh -uh, I'm going into freeze. <laughs> right? Ah, yes. The body is doing that because our culture has trained the brain to think that change is a source or a way, thing to be afraid of. It is associated change and fear. We have been trained to do it because it allows control if everyone will stay in their nice little box and do what they've been taught to do, right? Well, fortunately, there have always been places like this where we can learn that the box is an illusion. <laughs> It really is. It's not even Maya. <laughs> it is truly illusory. And that's what I love about the songs, right? And there was one that I was listening to on my way in. What if I could fly? What if I just right now started to fly? What if I gave away this notion, if I let go of this notion that I have to be here doing this now? Now, some of us have been through, shall we say, medical crises <laughs> because we were in a box. And in order to get out of the medical crisis, we had to get out of the box. And we had to stop allowing ourselves to be put in boxes. Yeah. So we begin the process. All right, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. And no, I don't care what you say. I can do this, right? We begin that process. And the world begins to come unglued because we're not staying in the old structure. So the old structure has to fall apart in order for something new to emerge. There is an idea that was developed by a forest ecologist, a man named Holling, C.S. Holling. And the term is panarchy. And it looks like an infinity symbol. We all know the infinity symbol, right? right? And it is. It's an infinite process. But it's one that goes over and over and over and over. It's not always happening in the same spot. Because the one constant in the material universe is? Change. Change. Right. So it's never going to be the same every time. It's going to be a little different each time. So in panarchy, the process starts, he was a forest guy, so the process starts with seeds, right? So we have a little seed over here. And the little seed begins to sprout. And then it sends out roots. And then it sends out leaves. And then it starts to interact with other things in the world around it. And then it starts to form community with other things around it. And we all know, I think a lot of people are hearing about fungal hyphae in the forest floor and the communication around trees. And, and then we have seeds and we have minerals coming in and we have all kinds of insects and birds contributing. And it grows and it gets stronger. And some of you may know that when they tried to, to create an artificial um, living environment for, for humanity, and they, they built this bubble, this big dome, and they had some people living in there, they planted trees, but the trees never formed any bark. And the reason they never formed any bark is there wasn't any wind for them to push against 
to begin to build the structure that allowed them to become solid forms. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So there is this need to interact with others and to feel those environmental pressures, right? And they help us grow and we get stronger and we start interacting more and more and we build more and more structure into our system as an individual tree or as a forest. We get more and more structure. And this applies to every human body and every organization and every community and every nation. So it's a model that works across all living systems. And we get more and more structure, and there's environmental pressures, there's changes in temperature and water and wind and all that good stuff in the tree and the forest and the organization are all doing just fine. And they figure, well, we can add this and we can add this and we can put on more of this and we get bigger and we can interact more. And then one day, just a normal thing happens, and the whole system goes chaotic. <laughs> it's chaos, oh no! <laughs> oh my goodness, not only is everything falling apart, I can't figure out what a thing, where anything is, or how to go, or where's my plan, right? Uh, all right. And, if I hang on to how it was, I'm going to hang out in that chaos a long time. Every organization, every community, every tree that insists on being what it was after this critical fluctuation is the technical term is going to be in that chaotic state as long as they keep reaching back. But in the process of growing and developing, there is always a seed, a bunch of seeds actually, of possibilities for the future. And if I can allow myself to discover and focus on that seed, guess what happens? I start the cycle at a new level, <laughs> right? And the moment I shift from focusing on what was and wishing that what was was still happening, ah, and start focusing on the seed that is here, the chaos ends. It is no longer the full catastrophe, to quote over the Greek. So this process of becoming is what we are all doing all of the time. It usually happens in tiny little ways, in various subsystems in the body, or in our relationships, or in our workplace, or in our family life. You know, just graduating from high school, graduating from kindergarten <laughs> is a panarchy situation. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes. Holmes said that nature will not let us stay in one place too long. He said she will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. <clears throat> We've been taught that nature is out there and my soul is in here. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> One of the joys of this kind of a place <laughs> and this congregation is we know that soul and nature are totally, inextricably intertwined. Yes? Yes. <sighs> so when the world out there says, uh, you know that old structure isn't working anymore. <laughs> and it will say that because I haven't been listening to my thoughts that have been telling me that, right? I have to wait till the world does. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> then I, I have a couple of options. I can consciously plant the new seed and consciously focus on its development or 
I can allow the catastrophic event to happen and the chaos to happen and go through the chaos. <laughs> and finally, let it go. Let the past go. Allow what is trying to happen to happen. Now, some of us who have gone through pregnancy know this feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us have done it the other way. <laughs> we've planned it, we've focused on it, and we've allowed it, right? So it's the same kind of thing. It's called panarchy. And pan means all, and archy means rule. So it's all ruling. It's the one power and the one presence, yes? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we have been taught to think that change is not something that is good for us. And yet, we couldn't possibly be alive if we weren't experiencing change. And we wouldn't be spiritual beings having a human experience if we weren't allowing transformation. That is the form that we are temporarily occupying for this particular experience to dissolve and a new form to emerge. And that form may be the body, it may be the relationship, it may be the organization, it may be the community, it may be the nation we live in, it may be any number of things, and it may be our beloved planet Earth who is going through a transformation. And we are contributing to that process because it is all one. It's not Earth there and me here, right? I am a part of what Earth is. So as I am shifting and changing, I am going to experience nature shifting and changing in, through, and around me. And as nature is doing that, it's going to help carry me through my shifting and changing. And together, we are transforming the human experience. This is what is going on in the world today. But if I hang on to the past, what's going to happen? Ah! <laughs> but if I can see the seeds of what is emerging, if I can focus on the possibilities that are present in this time now, if I can facilitate and nourish those seeds, wow. And that is what we are being called as spiritual beings in a human experience on this beautiful planet Earth to be and do now. And it's incredibly powerful. If I allow the chaos thing, I feel like a victim. But as I'm nurturing the seed, I am empowered. And as I allow that to be in alignment with the processes that are how nature works, that is the figure eight infinite cycle of panarchy, ah, yes. And that's why we come in community to share the one mind, the one soul, the one beingness that is in and through all that is. And then something else begins to happen because that seed is not just a material seed. It's not just that people are going to be living in new ways and different ways. It's all going to be new. It's all going to be different. And if I hang on to the past, it's going to be rough. But it's also what's going on in my beingness. Our beingness, our shared beingness, our knowingness, our love will be functioning at a whole new level. That seed has been planted in each and one of, every one of us. Yes, every one of us. The love that is manifesting in and through and as each and every one of us in whole new ways. And the wisdom that is 
becoming more and more available to us as we focus on its emerging presence in our lives and in our worlds. This is going to guide and lead and, oh wow, unfold in incredible ways over the next basically one generation. We are there. We are it. We are those seeds. And if we come together to nurture and nourish each other and to support each other in this process and to remind ourselves to let go of what was <laughs> because it's all new. It's going to be new. Yes? Yes. We know that our thoughts have creative power. And so we're going to intentionally, consciously choose to think, not distress about the past, but joyous expectancy about what is unfolding in this moment now, in us, through us, and as us, as our lives, our world, our beingness, is being transformed and life as we know it is going to be so much richer. It is here and now already. I can feel it. I can see it. And I know that you know it for so it is. Butterfly soup. I think I've been there. <laughs> but I'd never gotten a name before that would let me love that stage. And that's what I love so much about that. I can love the butterfly soup. Yeah, thank you. This is now our time of sacred giving, friends. Thank you so much for your gracious giving. Your financial gifts enable us to be in this beautiful space to enjoy our wonderful music, hear inspirational speakers, provide online viewing, and some more support the community nonprofits around the greater Portland area. Your gifts allow this powerful teaching to be known so we can continue to grow and be an expression of spirit in the world. Will the ushers please step forward? Contemplative walk, very good. There's no rush. There's no rush. All right, friends, let us accept and bless our offerings together as call and response. I bless these sacred gifts. I bless these sacred gifts. Given graciously with love. Given graciously with love. These gifts bless, heal, and prosper all they touch. These gifts bless, heal, and prosper all they touch. In giving, I am grateful to be richly. In giving, I am grateful to be richly, lavishly, lavishly, and abundantly blessed. And abundantly blessed. And so it is. And so it is. And now please again welcome our musicians as we receive your offerings. Yeah. Okay. I love that too. Um, the um, butterfly soup. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got a beautiful, we've got a cool song. Melissa Philipp Philippe, and oh, you're like, oh, good, okay. Um, so this is kind of like, this song is kind of like before she heard Dr. Ruth's message. <laughs> she obviously hadn't spoken, you know, heard the wisdom from you. Um, <clears throat> the, call, the, the song is called Kicking and Screaming. <laughs> And it's chaos. the chaos, yes, yes. So I invite you, if you feel like getting up, moving around. I think uh, um, Jim said it reminds him of when he was in a country band. So uh, I, think, I think we can all get down with this, yeah? <laughs> all right. Sorry, y'all. Let's do that. 
that again. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me get to the beginning of it. <laughs> she's pretty, she's pretty wordy, so I just want to. Okay, okay, here it is. I used to disown myself. I didn't know I was frightened. It wasn't enlightened. No. Uh -huh. Then my friend told me to really be free. I've got to be embracing every part of me. So even though sometimes it feels like pulling teeth, I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation. Bless you. Thank you, Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a part of the process that's called expressing. I think she just did that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is so good to be here. And it's so good to see you all nurturing and nourishing yourselves and the seeds of your being. Mm, yum, yum, yum. And if you are looking for any support in that, we will have some practitioners up here. Please consider a quick prayer with them. They'll be up in the front at the platform, and they'll be, you can put things online at Portland, at cslportland.org. You can submit a prayer request, both prayer requests put in the box and those online, 
will be prayed over by this team here, and then I know you'll experience transformation. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to invite you to stand for our benediction. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a new singer this morning. Mm -hmm. Love hearing this. Cool. One more. There you go. All right. Something wonderful. Call and response. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. And life is in all my affairs. Life is in all my affairs. I think it. I think it. I believe it. I believe it. I accept it. I accept it. I am it. I am it. Just the way I am. Just the way I am. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Have to come back up as we sing this song. It is for the month of February. It is the Black National Anthem. Yay! We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Our inspirational service is at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our podcast listeners. Our mission is to open hearts 
ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.